Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I see that. Uh, sorry, John. I just kind of pulled the rug out from on you and unmuted myself. But we are live, ready to go. Thank you for joining us. It is Monday night. It is not our typical night. And that is because we had too much to do this week. So we will be back here tomorrow night as well for a standard weekly whiskey. We're actually doing kind of the same thing, but different, but the same but also sort of different. Um, if you're looking for barrel news, you can find it tomorrow. Tonight, we're going to kind of dive on in. We're pumped. We've been talking about it all day. Um, we have some samples poured. We have a good time tonight. Uh, what are we up to, John? Oh, you're mute, but you're muted, buddy. Well, fuck, I'm muted. Yeah, you've been muted for a we, while. We both did. <laughs> I unmuted we myself because I was like, any minute, John's going to let me Jesus in here. But... H. Christ on a bicycle. You think we'd figure out how to run this fucking thing? Eh, so I thought I wasn't hearing you. So I was like, oh, man, I can mess with my audio settings. So I can't hear Jay anymore. <laughs> now uh, we were just muted like a couple of chuckleheads. Jesus Christ. Okay, well, to IT cool. guys walking Happy to Monday. <laughs> well, Happy yeah. Monday. It's good to see you, my friend. We've got some we've got some good stuff to drink. What are we, uh, what are we doing? Yeah, so we're going to get uh, tangled up in a little bit of bullet tonight, yeah? I've, yeah, we uh, got bullet, but we got a, a little twist for, for friends of the show, for friends of what I do. Over at our bourbon, you know that bullet is not new. Uh, it is something that I love literally the shit out of. This is this is basically going to be our seventh brush with bullet, not to give it away too much. But uh, we've got some company tonight, if I'm not mistaken. That we do. So uh, tonight we're going to be collabing here. We got Mike from Boston Scalico. He's going to jump in here. We're going to go through this, and we're going to select the very first Boston Scally bullet barrel. So Man. let's get Mike in here. We'll chat it up a little bit here. That just rolls off the tongue. What's hey Mike, up, fellas. What's going on, what's going on fellas? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Oh, I couldn't be uh, I couldn't be more excited to uh, to to throw down some bourbon on a on, on a Monday night. I got uh, yeah. I got my I got my three kids in bed. It's nine <laughs> o'clock and I'm ready to get after it. So uh, this oh, is man. awesome, guys. You and Good John point. are like the same the same person. I texted him earlier and I was like, "Can you do this?" And he's like, "Nah, I'm putting the kids down." And I was like, "All right, yeah. wow." Jo How many kids do you have, John? Two. Two kids. Okay, we just e we easy just mode compared this. to three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, don't underestimate it. It's um, we felt like one was easy, two happened. It was a shit show, and three, <laughs> it's just like yeah, you know, like at this point, you're not getting any. There's no sleep to be had. Forget it. It's right. Done. So, uh, we gave up on thinking there'd be any room for sleep at any given point. So, um, that that part is through. So, I, at least for the next whatever amount of years, but so well, you, you know, suck it. <laughs> you, just, you just suck it up and get after it. That's it. 20, 2043 is a great year to take a nap. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. But anyways, I'll get a mark of the calendar. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, because I, I have zero kids. I have a dog, and she sleeps more than I do, so I, I have nothing to really complain about. I, here. The thing, but here's the thing: I've had the argument about dogs, where it's like, like you're probably still getting up and taking the dog to go take a shit or a piss in the morning or whatever. It's like, I mean, with dogs, it's it's not. And if you go on vacation. It's like you got to either find somebody to put the dog, you got to bring the dog, or you can't bring the dog. So, listen, you got your own struggles there. I, I won't underestimate that either. True, true. It is a hard life. But uh, <laughs> in the end, we're still drinking bourbon on a Monday. Hard to complain. That's it, man. Absolutely. So, uh, Mike, you're joining us from Boston Scally Company. Um, for those yep. of uh, in the audience who don't know what Boston Scally is, can, can you give us a quick walkthrough? What do you do? What brings you to us? Yep. And, and what is that sharp object on your head? Yeah, that's it. So in, in Boston, we call these scally caps, right? So uh, throughout the country, you might know these as a uh, flat cap, an ivy cap, a peaky cap, Gatsby cap, a newsboy cap, uh, golf cap. There's a million different names for them. Uh, but in Boston, the term scally cap is, is synonymous with Bostonians and, and the community, community in which I come from, right? So they're not called that anywhere else in the country. But now that, uh, you know, I think I'd like to say that now that we've kind of brought them to market back in 2013, uh, it's something that w we've been able to kind of bring a little bit of that community and culture across the country in terms of a of a hat. And what we've realized is is uh, a, a lot of folks kind of share the commonality of what a scally cap stands for, right? So the term scally cap stems from the term scallywag. Uh, scally scallywags are essentially the you know the guys that were bottom of the totem pole, right? They were working their way up. They were they were they were getting after it on the docks and. Uh, they would wear these kind of hats, right? They were the longshoremen, and uh, they started to be known as scallywags. In the short term, for their caps, or they started to call them, uh, you know, naturally scally caps. Um, but from them, it, you know, it, it was essentially their hard hat, right? And uh, and it became synonymous with the blue collar community, and eventually evolved into a into a style, right? But I think the thing was, and and one of the things that 
you know, we like to think that we did was um, we saw that the scally cap always had that, you know, that big flat look, which I loved, right? You know, I grew up wearing my old man scally caps and some people may say, hey, that's something my grandfather would wear or it looks like a costume hat. It doesn't look good on me. Uh, and we knew that, you know, one thing that we wanted to do is modernize the scally cap a little bit, give it a little bit more of a form fit, uh, a little bit of a narrower fit. As you can see on my head, this doesn't look like a costume hat, right? Um, <laughs> you know, so, so we wanted them to feel almost like a baseball hat without looking like a baseball hat, you know, still have that traditional look and feel of, of a scally cap and, and, and pay homage to, to what that means to, to the blue collar community and the working class. Uh, but give it a little bit more of a modern look. So, um, you know, we started out with what I have in my head, which is a single panel scally cap, and we've stemmed from there into six panel, eight panel. Uh, we're coming out with some some new panels, which uh, I'll disclose in a couple of months for the fall. But um, it's kind of it's kind of stemmed from there. That's awesome, man. It, it, it's funny you mentioned that you're kind of modernizing kind of the look and feel because you know I was telling my significant other about this a while ago, and and she's like one of those old people hats and i was like ah, you're not gonna get it let me just show you and she's like, oh yeah. like that looks oh yeah she's like oh she was people. like she's like are you gonna start wearing grandpa hats and i was like no like they're fresh like they look nice and she's like mm, I, I don't know and see, so i, I showed see, her and, and i showed I, and her and she was like oh i get it now i love when people say that too though because it's like that was exactly the you know you hear this so many times right does it you find a you find a solution to a problem that you see in the market and the problem was is that I love these. I always thought scally caps are badass. If you're from Boston, it was always kind of like a tough guy thing. Um, you know, boxes are wearing them and things like that. And it just, you, you thought it was like a badass thing. And for me, the problem was that we needed to fix the fit a little bit. You know, I used to take my father's when I was growing up, I would cut the back and I would sew them tighter together. Um, and I would buy other brands and do the same thing with them. And I said, you know, it, it's time that we, you know, we kind of develop our own, but to, you know, to your point, I, I love when people would say that because I'm like, that's exactly, you know, the person that we want to talk to in terms of like, hey, we got something for you. We think that will solve that problem or, or, or give you some new perspective. Yeah, I think Bridget, really like, cool. yeah. How uh, before we dive into the whiskey here, how long have you been been fixing hat problems? How long have you been uh, in business? 2013. So we started back in 2013, started as something fun and um and, and, it, and it went crazy. And, and, you know, and it's, it's funny. I talk about this quite a lot that, um, you know, we're not, you hear the term lifestyle brand, right? It's like a, it's, it's almost like a buzz term. And I used to think that we were a lifestyle brand and, and, and I'm not quite sure we are. I think we're more of a community brand. And by that, what I mean is, is, you know, this, this started as an idea and we, we reached out to our local community and told friends about it. And, you know, from that, this turned into a global brand. Right, just because of word of mouth at, at, at the beginning, uh, and then we realized there was a commonality of people across the country and throughout the world with this, uh, which we thought was pretty fascinating. But we always bring it back to the core, which is which is the community. So, uh, like I said, you always hear a lifestyle brand, but I'm like, no, we're we're a community brand where it's you know we because it, it gets back that that granular to to our to our first initial customer when we first started in 2013. I dig that, man. I think that ties a lot really into the whiskey community where it's. You know, whiskey is a worldwide thing. I mean, obviously, everybody's got their own piece of it. Everybody does it their own way. Yep. But ultimately, it all kind of comes back to a community. The same type of deal. You sit down with your buddies, share a little whiskey, talk, tell stories, hang out. And that's, no matter where you are, that's sort of a, a universal trend. So I, I think that makes per, uh, a, lo a lot of sense. There's a lot of crossover to that, too. Yeah, there's, there's a massive amount of crossover. And it's funny, we use the saying that you live life to tell stories. And, you know, a lot of those stories are told over bourbon, some whiskey, some scotch, and uh, some rye. And, uh, you know, we always tie that into, you guys have probably seen it into a lot of our creative, into a lot of our marketing, because that's who we are. That's who our customer is. We, we, you know, we like to, we like to enjoy, uh, you know, some bourbon with our buddies. And, you know, we always think that's where the best stories come, come in, right? We're, I think that we're, we're natural born storytellers. Um, you know, specifically when I think about that blue collar community, um, you know, we're, we're always telling stories. It's, it's tight knit family, close friends that you grew up with, that you've been best friends with forever. Uh, that's really the, the core of, of what our brand stands for. Man, I love that, man. I dig it. I think it's pretty cool too. Like, cause you know, John and I were both in God, countless whiskey communities, you know, between Reddit yeah. and discord and, you know, especially to once coronavirus came and, you know, everyone yep. had to move online whether they wanted to or not. But like, you know, the whiskey community has really like grown. It's exploded. That we get to do lots of fun stuff like this, which is cool because, you know, 
it, it, sometimes people ask like John and I, like, where's your studio? And we're like, Oh, actually we don't do in person at all. Like that's, we have two that's the one thing we're not good at. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's all about finding ways to bring people together through whatever you can. Um, do you guys have a on-premise or are you guys online only right now? So we're, we are direct to consumer. We'll do, you know, obviously before COVID we do quite a bit of pop-up shops. Um, we are doing our, probably our biggest pop-up coming up actually at the end of August, uh, last weekend in August we do, it's called the St. Anthony's Feast. It's a, massive festival uh in the north end of boston uh it's probably their their biggest festival it's one it's probably one of the biggest in the in the country in terms of the saint anthony's feasts that go on throughout the country um i think over the course of three or four days there i think it's uh about three hundred thousand people pass through Holy um th this year uh i think it's speculated to be um you know granted if there's not any restrictions in place um right. depending on you know what's going on um i, th I think it's going to be pretty wild um you know we, we one of our favorite parts about this is not only the fact that we get to you know hang out with our customers and um you know meet them and greet them and talk to them firsthand and try and hats with them and hang out but you know they get to meet our family our friends that all come into the community and and kind of hang out but it, it's wild because people come from all over the country for this festival so it's and we'll see customers from all over the country pop through just because they know we're in town and they and they come through uh, but one of the other things that we are doing is we're building out our headquarters right now. I was talking to you guys a little bit earlier about it. We're pretty fired up about it. And as uh, we're building it at the, uh, the old Aerosmith recording studio address, uh, yeah. which is, which is uh, based out of Waltham, Massachusetts. So, uh, so in the late seventies, early eighties, Aerosmith would record out of there. Uh, they called it the a warehouse for Aerosmith warehouse. <laughs> and uh, they were, they recorded their rocks album out of there, and um, and they'd have music execs in there and hang out and party, and I'm sure they were drinking a shitload of bourbon and whiskey there, that's for sure. Totally. Um, but uh, we had the opportunity to uh, one of the warehouses at the at the address to to uh, to claim that, and um, we're we're in the midst of renovating it now. And, and what we really want to do at this spot is make it a a destination spot for people that are in the area to pop in and. You know, we're going to build a full bar in there, a barber shop, and um, we're going to make this place really, really cool. So, um, you know, we'll do some festivals over the course of the year, and pop up shops, and and maybe some music events, some stand up comedy events. We're we're, pre we're pretty pumped about it. We'll have you guys in there, that's for sure. Totally, man. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Sign us up. That's it, man. <laughs> My we'll parents. Uh, whiskey. They live in Connecticut, so that's a short hop. That's a that's an easy justification in my book. Oh, yep. there you go. It's awesome. That'd be great. Good well, I love to get it. The whole family involved. Yeah. Speaking of bars, why don't you, uh, what do you say? Should we start drinking some whiskey? Let's do it. I think we've, uh, yeah, we'll you've got these all poured out, right, guys? I've got yes. three samples poured out. One, two, and all three. Right. I'm going to go through and just nose these. I was doing a little bit of a sneak peek already, but I'm going to go through and just kind of nose them and start uh, collecting my thoughts on where I'm at with those. And then if you want to start tasting or nose or whatever, go right through yeah. and just got to choose your own uh, adventure here, I guess, Mike. Yeah, and while you guys are giving it a quick sniff, um, this is a bullet single barrel, so bullet bourbon. Uh, this is sourced by an undisclosed producer. They have two different mash bills, five different yeast strains. It might sound like four roses. It's not four roses. I mean, these are all going to be bottled at 52% ABV, so nice, nice round proof, nice high proof without ripping your face off. We have three yep. different samples here tonight, and it should be a good time since I'm the only person who knows kind of what these are, like the, the mash bills and the age and stuff. Gotcha. But to booze. <laughs> Certainly, guys. Hell yeah. Awesome. All right. So Take I'm some... through. I've nosed up through here. I think on the nose, I could probably pick out one that is a mild favorite. Yep. But these, there's some characteristics on these that uh, I actually, there's something in each one of these that I dig in its own way. Just getting my first sniff in. Yeah. Oh, these are going to be fun to go through. That first one's got a got a little bit a uh, little bit stronger scent, and I hope and it's funny. I was telling John this at the beginning. Um, as much as I love, uh, I love bourbon. I love my rye. I love my whiskeys. Um, I don't claim to be a, a connoisseur by any means, uh, but I know you know I know what I like, right? And um, you know I, I know enough, and I hope that I can be, and and I hope that my selection can can be the perspective of uh, I like to call it the the common man's. Perspective, yeah, man. Right. Because I think, you know, I think I, I think that especially over the past, I would say, decade. Right. I think that a lot of guys and, and, and gals out there really getting into, you know, into their bourbon, um, into their their whiskeys and rice and everything. 
And um, I think for me at the beginning, it was just kind of like an education piece. What was I, what was I trying to taste? What, what did I, what did I want to taste? Right. Um, you know, and I've, and I've, and I've taken a liking more to certain things o- over others, but um, you know, like I said, I don't claim to be a connoisseur where John and I were saying like, am I going to notice 17 layers of flavors? Maybe not, but I can, right. I can tell you offhand, which, which one I know that I'm, uh, I'm probably going to like here. Yeah. You don't have to be a, uh, an expert to know what you like. And, and, and that's no, what I nobody's tell people. a better judge than you at what you like, right? Yeah. 90% of the work is figuring out what you like. The last 10% yep. is just figuring out how to describe it. So like right. being like thumbs up, thumbs down yeah. is, is the hardest part for sure. These are all really good, by the way. Bullet Bullet does a good job. They've uh, I've actually bought six barrels before this one from them because it's just like it's always bang on. So yeah, I'm really jazzed about this one tonight. Oh, that's interesting. I think I, think I got an early leader in this one. I think I might know where I'm going. An early okay. leader. All right, tell us about it. I like that. Yeah, let's talk about. It. You don't have to tell us which one it is, but you can tell us what you like. No, yeah. So I'll tell you. You know, based on uh, based on my sniff test here, and based on uh, both my palate, um, okay. I I won't, I won't give the sample away, and maybe you guys will kind of share the same perspective. Maybe you're getting the same thing, but uh, a little bit milder on, on the smell, uh, almost a little bit sweeter smell is how I'll describe it. Um, uh, the the taste almost the same. I tend to. And I think this is where I, I fall probably more in the category of like, I, I like bourbons a little bit better, um, but slightly s- sweeter taste, pretty, pretty smooth on the palate. Um, you know, I, I like something that if I'm going to drink it, I like something that I can equally drink on the rocks or neat and enjoy it just the same. Um, for me, that's important. Um, most of the time I'm drinking things on the rocks just because I enjoy things cold, simply put. Um, but in terms of if I'm if I really really enjoy um, a bourbon, um, I'll want to drink it neat and really 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 soak it in, soak in the flavor on it. But um, yeah, that that um, like I said, they're all really good. But but the one I'm uh, the one I'm eyeing here is a little bit a little bit sweeter on the uh, palate, a little bit sweeter on the sniff test. There, I don't know if you guys get the same one or if you can pick which one I'm talking about. I know which one it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, baby. There's, there's, well, there's also one there that's uh, immediately out of the gate uh, was definitely a little bit stronger, um, both on the smell there and, and on the finish for sure. So that's number three then. Oh, I, I didn't. I would have thought you would have gone for another one, John. No, I was. I thought that that's what he was describing was three. Oh, I was okay. uh, on the on the for my first explanation or my second one. On the second, the one that you thought was a little bit punchy. Yeah. Interesting. We got triple blind. So, <laughs> as I go through them, I can, I, I can tell I can tell you which one might be right here. As I go through them, I catch. I, I'll, I'll just go ahead and like. I mean, yeah. we can reveal go these for to each other. It's not a big deal. As I go through, initially on the nose, I kind of thought one was good, fairly light, uh, a little bit of like light honey toffee, but a good nuttiness to the background. Oh yeah. So overall, I thought that was kind of cool. It reminded me of uh, when you catch like a an Elijah Craig that's twelve years old, like our not the barrel proof, but the uh, the single barrel selections that are like twelve years old. It reminded me a little bit of that. Uh, two, as it came through, had a little bit more oak to it, obviously, uh, but it also brought in like a cool, almost floral candy layer to it, which I thought was nice. Yeah. And then three was much more oak, but a lot more candy to it as well. So a little bit of a darker spice to it, oakier, but overall, I thought it was. On the nose, the most interesting, just because there was a lot in there. That's where I'm at on the nose. Okay. Okay. Love your description, by the way. Oh, I, man, I, thank I, you. What a wordsmith he is. Oh, my God, man. Candy. I'm going to start saying that about everything now. I do <laughs> words on the internet sometimes. <laughs> I write stuff about things. I say things about products, about things. All right. So this is my sample number one here. Color-wise... There yeah. is some variation, but not a ton. Yep. I really do get a, a a pretty. I think number one comes through to me is the lightest on the nose overall. I, yeah, I'm with you. It, it, it's nice, like it's inviting, it's sweet, yeah. but it's kind of mellow. Um, very, very open. Like I could see yeah. that being if you wanted to. No, 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 I don't want to go that route with it. If you wanted to give somebody a pretty good expression of something that's like very approachable, but not like your standard like 
every day. Like, okay, I don't mean this in a bad way, but when I think of Woodford Reserve, I think of like, this is bourbon. Like, if you want to pour yeah. somebody bourbon who doesn't understand what it is or know it or they're not familiar yeah. with the category, Woodford Reserve, I, I'm I like, here you that. go. Try this. This checks off those boxes for you. And this should cover yeah. the vast majority of the basic flavor wheel things that you want to get out of bourbon. Mm -hmm. I think I of sample that. one as being along the same path, but just diverting a little bit on it's a, a slightly more interesting profile. Yeah, it's it's interesting, but not challenging, I think is a Bingo. nice way to put it. I, I like it. It reminds me of Baker's. It has a weird nuttiness that I don't yeah. usually get from Bullet. That I yeah, think is, it's is not game. unlike Baker's. That's true. I was thinking more of a Heaven Hill thing, but now that you say that, I think that does really suit it because of the proof wise. It's got to be right on there by 107. Yeah, it's pretty close. But like two, two is back to everything I love about Bullet. Oh, yeah. I, I would agree. Is the reason I, people think it's four roses. Because it, <laughs> it has that light floral. Yeah. It brings in that uh, different yeastiness to it. It is. It's got a little bit more spice to it, too. That higher rye. It, it, I mean, overall, it's tough to complain about any of these. If I had to pick one right off the nose that I think is my favorite, it's going to be down, somewhere into the two or three range. I couldn't tell you exactly which yet. Yeah, but which one, one you like two. snipping? Yeah, I'm, um, I, would, I would agree with you. A couple points there, too. It, it's funny you mentioned Woodford. I think we were talking about that before the show a little bit, that um, you know, th three of the bourbons I keep on hand. I obviously have my bullet here in the background, but um, you know, Buffalo Trace and, and Woodford is almost like a, to me, like to your point, it's like anything that bourbon – kind of anything that portrays bourbon it's like that is your standard if you want to taste a solid bourbon that is everything for what it's worth in terms of bourbon i think uh woodford's a, a great place to i don't even want to say a great place to start i mean that's a anytime all the time but um yeah i think i'm with you also in regards to between two and three uh i can tell you where i'm leaning towards more um i'm probably leaning towards number two here a little bit um, have you tasted think, through all of them Okay. Um, yeah. Was was three the one that you thought was a little bit uh, heavy for you? A little heavy handed? Yeah, it, it was a little bit. Yep. So yeah. um, I, it was uh, number one was was a bit modest, a um, little bit light, not as, yep. you know, to, to, to your terms, um, uh, not so much. I didn't get that, uh, that, that candy or spice. Uh, what right. I liked about uh, two is a little bit sweeter, which I tend to like a little bit, not, not overly sweet. Um, and not overly strong um, in, in terms of, at least, at least for me. Three was very similar. Um, I got a, a little bit similar, but it was it was a little bit stronger, both to the nose and to the taste. I think if there's something that I, uh, I want to enjoy, um, you know, that I can enjoy sipping uh, a bit, it would be it, number two is, is is where I'm landing here. Yeah, yeah so number, this is two. number three, I don't know if you guys got this on the nose, but like, this one was really kind of out there for me. It kind of tasted like uh, like ginger and black tea and like orange peel. Like the other two were really going to get that orange. Yeah. Caramely, nutty, really desserty. One more desserty than the other. I, I yeah. really agree. I got a sweet tooth. Number two was just like, you know, like pound cake and caramel and brown sugar all day. And I love it. But three was like totally. really herbal and like yeah. very, very orangey. What? Yeah. yeah the get, citrus I, that I got in three was cool. Yep. That was I got a bit more. Good. These are great. I mean, they're all great. These are all fantastic. Whew. Yeah, three. Like, I, I like three, but three, I would like ex have to want to drink only that that day. I'd have yeah. to like walk into my office and be like, I am drinking bullet number three. Like, two. Yeah, that, one's right, on that. that one's right on the its other, own level. The other thing, I think subconsciously here, I keep I keep going back to sample number two. Uh, mm -hmm. when I'm just kind of going through it and sipping. I keep going back to it, um, which I think is it, which is now making it a little more clear to me. Um, you know, as I continue to taste through these, that um, that's probably that's that's my pick right there. Oh yeah, two yeah. nice. two solo. So as I went through these on the nose, I thought that two and three were my favorite on the nose. They had the most going on. I thought one was cool and unique for a bullet product, actually, but it was fairly kind of two dimensional. Yeah. Really. There wasn't a, as much going on. Three was sort of the opposite, where it had a ton going on. Yeah. And if it's going on in a direction that you're not crazy about, like, so Jay, I thought you might be a little bit uh, sensitive to that Oak Spice on three too, because that one is uh, definitely darker in profile. You know, it has like this richer, almost like the, uh, 
like a, a super dark molasses note almost like yeah. where it starts to lean away from being sweet and gets a little bit more spice a little bit more almost astringent but not like in a bad way for me anyway and then that background as it starts to finish really does come through with a citrus layer that i was like wow that's uh not what i was expecting just from the nose because it was floral and spicy and oaky on the nose but then it did switch over to that citrus which i was pretty excited about it sort of reminded me of what can happen to some of the russell's reserve picks when yeah you get that's this, like if it had the same creaminess to the palate i would have really like been wondering if you were fucking with me i was gonna gonna say this tastes like russell's jr but like kind of an off barrel because like it has a yeah. lot of the same character but um i don't like i like i think it's good but for me it kind of interesting like sample one kind of drink under the proof i, I would have been like this is 52 percent like yeah. Sample two drinks dead on. I'd be like, yep, this has that nice viscosity. It drinks right around that 50 mark. But sample three, I thought drink a lot hotter. It definitely yeah, had a lot did, more yeah. heat punch for something at 50. Yep. Like I probably would have been thinking up in like the 57, 58, which is a big jump. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm with you. It was yep. pretty noticeable. I, and the more and the more the more I taste through them, that 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 uh that punch is more noticeable on three for sure. Yeah, and it's it not is. like fading away either. I was like, oh, maybe it'll go away after a couple of sips, but each time I'm like, nope. Yeah. There yeah. It is. I'm I'm curious to uh look at the glass from number three and have a smell of that tomorrow morning. Cause you know how the evaporation mm. alone can really kind of change what goes on there. I think that's a super interesting pour, and I really dig it. But I'm not sure if if it's the most balanced word number two, I think represents a really well balanced bourbon. And one, I think is just a little bit too, too straightforward, too simple. It's good in what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it really does kind of check off a lower proof vibe for me. Yeah. That's nice. I like one too, but I really like Baker's. So like, that's kind of, yeah, I, like, I know I'm, but Baker's is, is more interesting than simple one. Mm -hmm. It's nice though. Sweet. I would uh well, two would make a great cocktail. A single barrel yeah. expression. I think that a weaker selection of that would probably be kind of on par with this here. Like yeah. this doesn't hang with the like the eight and a half year bakers that are rolling out now. Like some of those when they're up over eight years are real, real nice. Yeah. I, th I think for me too, and I think this is where my common man's perspective kind of comes in. I'm looking for something that's that's a little more vers versatile, right? Sure. Um, you know, Jay, to your point where it's, it make a good cocktail, right? Like if I'm making an old fashioned or, 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 or whatever, something that, um, you know, if I want to drink it straight, drink it on the rocks and make a cocktail out of it, I'm getting the most use out of my, out of Bingo. my, uh, out of my cocktail. And, 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 and listen, if there's something that you're going to want to enjoy out there, you, you're going to want to be able to utilize it for, for all that it is. Right. Um, you know, Hey, and listen, unless you want to go out and buy a bunch of bottle, bottles of bourbon and, 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 and have at it and have one that you're only going to drink uh, neat and one that you're going to make your cocktails with or, or whatever. But I think for me, uh, I think two kind of does it all. Uh, I mean, I could drink that neat all day. Uh, and I think that would make a, a great old fashioned or a cocktail out of that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's got just enough rye spice to it as well that you could even do yeah. a Manhattan with this thing and not, yeah. and not have oh, to yeah. uh, do too much with it. I think this is a, <laughs> a, a really good example actually it, i re i do dig that caramel that it's gone there too it's a nice dark sweetness to it it's interesting too background vanilla uh, too of the two mash bills that we're tasting tonight um sample let me make sure i got this right yeah sample two is actually the lower rye mash bill so is it really i would, yeah. I would say I, that it's likely much older but lower rye it's uh, gonna be that oak that's driving yeah. the spikes then yeah and yeah because you know, it's pretty old too Good. You guys, you guys know the proof on these. Uh, these no, are fifty-two percent. Got it. The ABV on these are all all the same at fifty. Oh, they're all the yeah. same. No kidding. Yep. Yep. So you, which is really nice, because I hate some places where you go, you taste your bourbon at one hundred and thirty percent, and then you leave, and they water it down to forty-five, and you just have yeah. to hope yeah. that it tastes exactly the same. So we're tasting uh, well, that in the additional few months that it may spend in the cask until they actually get to bottling it, like can really kind of screw sure. with you. Yeah, yep. but one of the things I like about Bullet is that we are tasting exactly what every bottle in this slot is going to taste like because it's That's already pre-bottled. So we know the yield. Yep. Um, and what you taste is what everyone who buys this will taste. There's there's no variability, which my yep. science brain hates. So yeah. Hey, I'm happy with, with two. If that's where you guys want to go with this, I'm on board. If you wanted to go three, I would also sign off on that. But two, I think, like you said, it scratches more itch 
overall. It's got a whole lot going on with it. That's awesome, man. That's great. Yeah, why don't we... Uh, I think two's definitely. the winner. S sample one definitely I, th I thought was nice, but it would get lost in a cocktail, and sample three was just kind of too, too out there. I think two is... Yeah, three was definitely really unique. One was too light. That's One's nice. like one of those guzzlers too. Like you, you put that out at a party because you're like, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. this one wasn't too crazy. Everybody's yeah. probably going to be able to get on board. You know, it's super approachable. Let's just put this yeah. out and see what happens. Yeah. And then I mean, that could be, I mean, listen, that could be, you know, it could be a good introductory, you know, for somebody that's, that, that, that doesn't drink it so much. Or like you said, you know, you know, I think you made a good point. They'll might get lost in a cocktail. If, if you're doing it that, totally. if you are looking for something lighter, it'd be, I guess it would be fine. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, they're all fantastic. You give me any of these, I'd, I think I'd be happy with any of them. Cool. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what I like to hear. I think it's, you yeah. know, sometimes we send samples back and we're like, you know, try again. Um, I think they sent us three bangers. Certainly they're yeah. super unique too, because sometimes you get three samples and they taste exactly the same. And you're like, well, right. I guess I'll just blind throw a dart. But really no, different. These are, these, are, these are noticeably uh, diverse. I think also the the... the I think the 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 order in which we tasted these in also, uh, I'd imagine maybe this is strategic. Uh, you know, one, two, and three, um, kind of how it was stepped up from one to two to three. We kind of did that naturally. I don't know if it always does that when you guys do these tastings, but um, if if it was set up that way, it was, it was pretty brilliant because I think the two fell right in the middle um, in regards to you know the strength of it and some of the flavors going on there. I'd, I'd like to take credit for that, but I, I literally pulled the first one out and was like, you're number one. One. I there you go. Enough. Pulled out number two. I like fished around. All right, you're number two. So I'm, I'm glad it worked out this way because if we'd started oh, with three, I think one would have tasted even like thinner, maybe even kind of bland after just the wild yeah. complexity of three. So we got really lucky here. Sure. The statistic gods smiled on. Yeah. My, I tried to drink. I tried to, I, I threw some water in between. I try, I tried to try to give them each their own, uh, you know yeah. their own fair, their own fair tasting, the best they could here. Whew. Yeah, everybody had a shot at the title here, but I think I think we picked a really good winner overall. This is going to be a nice one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so this is a uh, sample two is That's Mashville right. one, which is a twenty one percent rye, and it uses their number three yeast, which is kind of uh, leather and caramel. Um, and then samples one. Sample one was their high rye mash bill uh, with the fruitier yeast. And sample three was their high rye mash bill with the leather yeast. So they, they kind of approximate what their different strains taste like. But I'm not surprised looking at these recipes that they, they kind of mimic what they taste like. Sure. So Dave in the chat had asked about the uh, the finish on this. And for me, really, it is definitely on the longer side of medium. It might even, I might go as far to say it's a pretty long finish, really. Mm -hmm. Um the the hard candy caramel really sticks out on this one like i catch that for yeah. a long time maybe a light touch of a uh, toffee too and that kind of hangs out for a while there there's uh, more oak and spice on the nose than there is on the palate and it carries through really nicely the uh i think the finish on three was a little more complex but it was also a little bit more wild so there was a little bit more going on there where it kind of bounced from um uh, some savory stuff to spice to citrus and this stays a little bit more into the sweeter lane but in a good way like overall this is a really solid pick yeah. awesome cool yeah i'd like to i think I'd, I'd like it a lot good pick nice and versatile a lot of character 52 percent drinking right on so yeah. easy choice for me it's awesome yeah. i dig it so for everyone watching at home uh, who may not be familiar with barrel picks, so what we're going to do um, is when we log off of this call here, and we'll, we'll chat after this, we'll have a good old time in the green room. But um, what I will do is I'll contact Bullet, tell them number two it is, and they will go ahead and start arranging delivery. So we're probably looking like 12, 12-ish 12 weeks or so between uh, the bottles leaving Bullet, arriving at retail. Uh, we'll we'll get all that information out there. But uh, the nice part is they are bottled. The the sad part is bullet is a little slow, even though they are bottled. But you know we don't have to wait for this to age anymore. Right. Uh, we don't have to wait for it to float on in from another country. It's in Kentucky. It'll be in DC, um, and it'll be available just as you see it. So bullet does a really cool awesome. design. I love what they do. I think it's pretty classy, and and you got good bourbon inside. That's totally. Awesome. Yeah, this will be a good pick, and we'll have a lot of fun with it. So 
Uh, anybody else who's not subscribed to the show, go ahead and click that button for us. So the next time we do one of these, you uh, get the little alert, let you know what's going on. If you want to support what we're doing, you can catch us at patreon.com slash the whiskey net. And Jay, if you want to go ahead and bring this thing on home here, I think we're about ready to head back to the green room. Mike, go ahead and stick around and we'll catch you off there. Yeah, we'll have a good old time. Uh, Mike, it has been awesome to have you. If people awesome. at home are looking for more from you, uh, they can find you where at your website, where else? Yep. You guys can find me at bostonscally.com. Um, check us out on Instagram on at, at Boston Scally. And then, of course, at facebook.com backslash Boston Scally Company. Appreciate you guys having me on. This is awesome. I'm, uh, I'm pretty fired up about this. And I uh, hope your guys' fans are as, are as excited as I am. I mean, I cannot wait to drink this barrel in that Aerosmith studio. I think that's going to be uh, one that's hell of a time. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, can't, I can't wait to have you guys down. That, that'll be awesome. That, that'll be fantastic. This is, uh, this is great. I want to make sure I have one of these for the mantle in there and then one that I'm going right. to pound the shit out of. So <laughs> you want to be great. dipped in bronze or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> cool. Well, I mean, I'm looking forward. I need a lobster roll in my body stat. So this has sure. been an awesome time. Uh, thank you again, Mike. If you're looking for more yeah. from John, you can find him at thebourbonfinder.com and the Bourbon Finder on Instagram. And of course, as always, I'm Jay from Whiskey Raiders. If you're looking for news and reviews, um, as well as different articles, we're cataloging a bunch of different whiskey. Check us out online. And in the meantime, we'll be drinking some bourbon. Catch us here again tomorrow night. We are blending with Penelope. And that is our second barrel pick of the week before I head off to Kentucky. So we have a lot more booze this week. So uh, thanks, everyone. Cheers. And we'll uh, we'll see you backstage. Cheers, guys. See you guys. <laughs>